hope that as you're uh, watching this video, tuning into this video, that uh, things are going well with you, that you've had time for your personal intimacy with the Lord. Uh, lately, the Lord's been drawing me in ways that are so face to face. Even as I drive to work in the morning, he perfectly times songs on the radio for me to speak to me. It's just intimate and face to face. And I pray uh, that you've been having that with the Lord. Uh, if he seems silent with you lately, be patient. Take comfort in the fact that he hears you when you speak to him. If you don't feel him immediately or get an immediate answer, don't think that he's left you or that he doesn't hear you. Uh, take comfort in the fact that he hears you. I know that's my anchor. I always tell the Lord that, that Lord, even if I don't feel you at the moment that I'm speaking to you, or it doesn't seem that you're answering me immediately, I know that you hear me. That in itself gives me peace for the day to know that every time I speak, to my first love, my bridegroom, Jesus Christ. He hears me when I talk to him. That's enough to hold my heart steady right there. I've been praying about a subject uh, that is not an easy thing to discuss. Uh, I may lose subscribers over the subject that I'm about ready to speak about, but that's not important to me. I'm not doing this channel in my strength for myself to lift myself up or for my namesake. I feel led by the Lord to speak his truth the way he has called people ever since the world began, to speak what he reveals to them, whether it's received by people or not. I feel persuaded in my heart, as Paul said, that what I'm about to speak about has come from the Holy Spirit and what he has revealed to me through his word and through my personal intimacy with him. Uh, not something that I've learned from books, movies, or a classroom. Uh, so what I'm about to relay to you, I have scriptures to back up as proof, but this is something, as in everything that I speak about, everything that God lays on my heart, that you have to search yourself and study and test yourself by the word of God. Don't take what I say as being truth. Always take what someone says to you, including myself, and vet them by the scriptures and by what you see in the word of God alone and by your own personal prayer life with the Holy Spirit. But what I'm about to discuss with you is something that I've prayed about for many months, probably since I began this channel. And I've left this subject alone simply because I feel that it's a divisive issue in the body of Christ. And what I mean by that is that there is a great debate and a great um, schism in the body of Christ and divide uh, between Reformed theology, um, those who believe in God's sovereignty and election and salvation, and us, and us being predestined and chosen by God before the foundation of the world, and those who believe that we choose God based on our own power and ability to have a free will to choose. Uh, I know that there is a great divide over this, and what I'm about to speak about is what I feel 100% persuaded by the Holy Spirit that he has shown me about four years ago. Uh, up until about four years ago, I believed in a pre-tribulation rapture. I believed in free will. Uh, I believe that the Antichrist would be a Muslim. Uh, as a matter of fact, I feel led by the Holy Spirit to do another video very soon, Lord willing, as he gives me time to do another video exposing the distraction of a Muslim Antichrist. And I'll get to that in another video, Lord willing, very soon. Uh, but what I'm about to share with you, I realize um, I could incur a lot of anger, uh, a lot of railing maybe even abuse and lost subscriptions. But does that matter to me? No, that doesn't matter to me. What I am concerned about is that I defend the word of God, that I expose false doctrine according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.11 says expose false doctrine, uh, have nothing to do with it. Those who preach on a free will doctrine, that man has it in himself as a lump of clay, a child of, born a child of wrath, born in sin, those who preach that we have the ability and the power to choose life, to choose God. I firmly believe that the Holy Spirit has shown me about four years ago now that this is not so. When he first revealed this to me, uh, uh, it shocked me. Uh, I literally felt like I was going to fall, over, fall out of my chair when the Holy Spirit revealed these things to me. Um, it is not a popular doctrine. Uh, the viewpoint the Holy Spirit has led me to uh, leaves me in the minority, as does the way the Holy Spirit led me to see that uh, there is no pre-tribulation rapture. And that's something that I feel very alone in most of the time uh, in my church and even with family at times. But 
I don't follow the Lord simply to get other people to agree with me or if I stand in the, in the majority. Even if I stand alone, but I'm clinging to what I know the Holy Spirit has revealed to me, that is what I'm holding on to. Even if it means I lose friends, if I lost family members, respect, uh, or if I stood alone. If I feel convinced that the Holy Spirit has revealed something to me, I'm standing with it. The prophets of old often stood alone. They would go to the nation of Israel and explain what God had shown them, and they were called crazy. Uh, they were ousted out of town. Jesus himself was called crazy, demon-possessed. Uh, who does this man think he is to say these things? By whose authority do you say these things? So I am fully prepared as I make this video um, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, uh, because like I said, I've been struggling with this. Like, Lord, should I come forward with what you've revealed to me about this? Just like I came forward with the fact that he led me away from the pre-tribulation rapture. Uh, that I do not any longer believe that it is man who has the ability to choose God apart from the grace of God. The scriptures tell us clearly, and you can look this up, that repentance is granted by God. The Apostle Paul said that those who disagree with us, we must pray for them, that God would grant them repentance to the knowledge of the truth. I believe that since God is the creator of the universe, this is what his spirit has taught me. And I have scriptures to show you that he brought to my attention over these past four years because I struggled with him with this. I wrestled with God over this, and he continued to reveal to me uh, the truth of uh, the fact that he elects us according to his will. Uh, but God is the one who grants repentance. It is not us that has the ability. We were born dead in sin and trespasses. Jesus clearly says in John 15, 16, you did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you. Recently, a brother in Christ wrote me and left a message on my channel saying, you sound like you're reformed in your theology. And it's interesting because I've never come forward on my channel and exposed openly or said openly that I do believe that God elects those that he chooses before the foundation of the world, that I do believe in a reformed theology. Does that mean that we are not to go out into the world and preach the gospel to every creature? Absolutely not. We're commanded by Jesus to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature as a testimony. We are to speak the truth as Jesus did, as a testimony. Um, I don't know who the Lord God will call, as Paul said. My job is simply to spread the gospel. It is up to the Lord to draw those whom he chooses to hear the gospel. Those who are appointed to salvation, the scripture says, will believe. Who does the appointing? Do we appoint ourselves to believe, or does the Holy Spirit appoint us before the foundation of the world? Well, let's find out. Romans 3.11 says, no one seeks after God. No one seeks after God. How do we seek after God? I believe from the scriptures that our seeking and pursuing God comes from God seeking and pursuing us first. Our response to God is exactly that. It's a response to God's drawing and his initiation first in us. Ephesians 1.4 says he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. God didn't wait for me to be born and then make my choice. He chose me by his grace before the foundation of the world. Does that mean that I deserve it, that there's something better about me or any one of his elect than someone else? Absolutely not. As the scripture says, we were all born children of wrath. You did not choose me, Jesus says, I chose you, John 15, 16. Psalm 139 shows us that God wrote all of our days in his book before one came to be. Romans chapter 9 is a very interesting book. Uh, Paul's hearers in Romans chapter 9 argued with Paul because they understood exactly what Paul was implying. So let's go to Romans chapter 9 uh, if you have your Bible with you. Um, if you don't, then look it up later. Paul starts off here in Romans 9. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. And I'm reading from the King James Version. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Now, I, I'm claiming the same thing as I'm making you this video, that I'm not lying to you. I think those of you who have known me and known this channel long enough have known that I come to you with sincerity. As Paul is saying here, I say the truth in Christ. And this goes for me too. I'm not lying to you and my conscience bears witness to me in the Holy Ghost. And I claim the same thing that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed and cut off from Christ 
for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom are concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God, blessed forever. Amen. Yes, Christ is God. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are Israel. And of course, we know that those who are born again of God's spirit are Israel, are the spiritual Israel and are grafted into Christ. It goes on to say here in verse 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, Paul says. But the children of the promise are counted as the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And remember, God said this to Abraham when he visited him. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children, here's, here's the catch here. That for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. God is making a statement here that he's already chosen before the children were born, before they had done anything good or bad. God was not waiting on these twins' decision. He had already chosen before they were born. This is what Romans 9 says here. 